uh, deregulated BGE, right, which became Constellation. Um, the argument here, right, was that well, the free market works for the good of everyone, and if we deregulate electricity, right, consumers will pay less, right, and that's exactly what happened, right? Everybody's electric bill went down, right? No, in 2006, when this deregulation kicked in, because they were smart, they said we're going to deregulate it. We'll deregulate it in a couple of years, right, when the decision's already been made. And so, when the deregulation actually kicked in, what happened? 72 percent rate hike, right? Um, yeah, those costs are still going up, right? They do it when they when they raised those prices, uh, 72% in 2006. They made 500 million dollars in profit in 2005. This wasn't because they were losing money and they needed to raise prices because of some external factors. This was because we took all the democratic controls over their profit making away, right? And they were like, great, let's make some more money off of these people, right? Um, since the rate hikes, BG&E has cut the workforce by 15 percent. Um, when they've done this, right, the CEO, Mayor Shato, he's taken home $79 million in the past five years, right? So this is predatory. This is exploitative. This is cannibalizing, right, the infrastructure of this city, right, in order to provide for private profit. Um, and all of this stuff is interlinked, right? Um, all of these things are kind of tied together. So right back there, we passed it a little while ago, is the T-Road price building, right? T. Rowe Price is the largest shareholder in Constellation. They own 7.3% of Constellation. What T. Rowe Price is, is an investment firm, right? So they basically manage people's money, right? So if, if you're rich, right, you've got your money with T. Rowe Price, and T. Rowe Price owns 7% of the price of what was formerly a, a, a regulated public utility and is now an engine for private profit, right? This is what privatization is about. It's about taking public things that should be public, things that should be benefiting everyone in the city and should be run to that end, and turning them into occasions for people to make money off of them, and lots of money. Um, and this is, you know, the problem here is that we have no control, right? We have no democratic oversight over these things that are being run ostensibly for our, our public good. Uh, so Constellation, right, you can see the top of their office building down there, they're the 30th biggest air polluter in the U.S., right? They have extensive, extensive nuclear investments, right, with their partner EDF, right? All up and down the Chesapeake, right? You think the economic crisis is bad. You think about the crisis when the Chesapeake goes nuclear, right? And the people who say, oh, nuclear technology is safe, it's never going to happen. Well, you can look at Japan for that, right? And yet they're still pushing for more nuclear construction. Um, so this is the kind of privatization we need to be worried about. Um, there's other privatization that's going on. There's other things that are happening that are taking away bits and pieces of our city and turning them into things that we have no control over that have exist for private gain. Um, is Annie around here somewhere? Annie? Paging Annie Kaufman? No? All right. Um, somebody was going to talk a little bit about Veolia, but I'll do that instead. Right? Veo How do people know about Veolia? Right? Veolia runs the circulator, right? It's a nice piece of free infrastructure for the city, right? It's a nice little bus, right? Oh, here's Annie. Hey! Hey! Okay. All right, so the stuff that's by here that Veolia runs is the cooling. Um, they do all the cooling for Harbor Place, for City Hall, for lots of these corporations here. But that's just a little part of what Veolia does. Veolia is now basically owns the infrastructure of Baltimore City. Huge parts of our transportation. Huge. They own our composting plant. Um, but these aren't simple ownerships. These are public-private partnerships where they're basically doing the city's work, and they're doing it for corporate motives. That means, for example, a service like the buses. They run the Charm City Circulator. They have loaned us the money to buy the buses, so we're in debt to Veolia. And they pay the drivers between 30% and 50% less than the MTA bus drivers who are unionized work for the state. In Baltimore, Baltimore is like the testing ground for how Veolia operates in the U.S. Um, the CEO of Veolia U.S. is from Baltimore, used to own the Yellow Cab Company. Um, and Veolia is growing in America and is a huge global corporation with uh, its headquarters in Paris. And so they run this kind of infrastructure in lots of different countries. One of the places that they're really strong is in Israel and Palestine, and that's where they run the infrastructure of apartheid Israel. Um, 
and there is a global boycott movement against Veolia, and Baltimore is a perfect place for this campaign because we are the epicenter of Veolia's operations in the U.S. infrastructure to a corporate interest that's going to pursue all sorts of dodgy policies all around the globe, right? That decision was made for us, and we need to take that decision-making power back. Yeah. Right. So let's go down to the harbor for our last stop of the tour, and then we'll come back and make some noise on the way back as we meet the Columbus Day Parade.